All right, let's get started. Back in my day. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing That'll before it gets the too late. <laughs> exactly. And I got a whole... Bro, I got two CDs downloaded. I'm awesome looking ass. All right, so here we go. All right, let's 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 start with this intro here. Welcome to uh, another episode of Ventures in Loxos. I'm just going to get right into the introductions here, folks. We we aren't going to waste any time on frivolity. Uh, starting at the top, we have AGTX the Dragons. Dragons these nuts. Dragons these nuts. Nice. <laughs> and he will be playing the human slayer which is a homebrew class forward slash dragon shaman 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 lee then we have <laughs> <Charlie. laughs> got to do more wolves put more wolves in the background um it's michael it's michael T. okay okay no um then we got kasid 69 and she will be playing a Garagus, the Mykonid Pion Mender, little, you, you know, you always bring a Garagus to the parties because it's a fun guy. Da -da -dun. Hey. <laughs> Dragons. <laughs> 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 then we have Icy Hot underscore 2305. Who will be playing Zoltan Heisenberg, the Half Drow, Deep Druid? He's not your mama's druid. He's not your daddy's uh, druid. He's not your daddy's daddy's druid. He's not your daddy's 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 druid. Anyways, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we all know he needs help. <laughs> then we have Ness, who will be playing Android. Rizone, the these are facts. <laughs> the, the, he is the uh, saint of Corlon Lorethian, bard, forward slash paladon, paladine, palodian. I don't know. I think I'm more of a backslash. Yeah, more of a back. He's a backslash. <laughs> <laughs> no forward slash for you, sir. We keep going. I'm in the stuff and joining us tonight, also we got Unit 620 back. Okay. He's back from his yeah. his birthday party that he had to go to last session, and he will be playing Elsa Blackwell, the 12 year old feral little girl fighter. She's technically a fighter, but I mean she's pretty freaking diverse, diversal. Is that a word? Diversity? No. No? That is not, a word. <laughs> That's, yeah, no. That is not good English. She diversifies in her <laughs> attack <laughs> abilities. <laughs> She's diversified. <laughs> also, she is the warg goddess and a little shapeshifter who now has a uh, living shadow whose name is Biggs. And that is the group. I am Lord Pog, your humble DM. Pogus, Pogonius, Lordus, Pogonius, Pogus, Dickus. And, uh, yeah. Yep, welcome to uh, Adventures in Loxos.
scene. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> what is it? He's like, freeze frame. You don't say freeze frame. <laughs> Dude, I, I just did that bit just a little bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze frame. You don't say freeze frame. <laughs> uh, stage freeze. That's yeah, right. that's what it is. Stage freeze. You don't. You don't have to say stage freeze. <laughs> don't say stage freeze. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, like he's just so weird. It takes him right out of the moment, dude. He's like, you don't. <sighs> Drops his arms. So where we are picking up is we are. Last session. You guys got to hang out the night before, well, kind of the day before the Honored Jing Zhu Festival. You got to meet some of the uh, denizens of the continent of Ping Shun. Many different kinds of uh, races. Odd races, races that <clears throat> you would have never thought even existed. And while there, you learned many different things. Many of you learned many different things about yourselves. You got to interact with the Koatoa, which are these little frog, which are these like short little frogmen who, uh, <clears throat> toadmen. You know, you don't put the toad before the stool, um, or the stool before the toad type yeah. of, yeah, that's what it, anyways. Uh, these weird, like, they 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 are off. They are extremely odd. And Agaragus got to speak with one of their uh, renowned, and they had themselves a private conversation. Uh, Zoltan got to have a private conversation with one of the uh, fortune with a fortune teller, and she told him some things in private as well. And hopefully you all kind of remember what what happened there because I'm not going to uh, say it out loud because it was a yeah. private moment with the players. Um, you you all also yeah. learned that there is an assassination plot against uh, Zumaru the. Dragoon shaman of the of the dragoon race, which is bad because if that succeeds, then the Jingzu is finished. Uh, for the audience at home, if you want to learn more about the Jingzu, go back and watch some of the episodes because I'm not going to really uh, hash out <laughs> all that again. But um. <clears throat> During that time, you all noticed at some point Elsa had seemed to have wandered off doing her uh, doing her own thing. Android, you were unsure if she had climbed into the bag of holding and um, whatnot, but you're unsure now if she'll ever want to really ever go back into the bag of holding since uh, that seems to be a... <clears throat> A whole thing as well, all of its own, if the bag of holding chooses to accept you as an offer. So we're gonna start with Elsa and the day of the the day before the Jing Zhu. We we ended the the episode last session with Yu Quill approaching to be selected as one of the honored chosen. He is going to be one of the contestants of the Jing Zhu. And he is actually, this is a monumentous occasion because dragoons don't usually enter the tournament because they hold the festival. This will be the first year that the dragoons ever have entered a contestant and uh, even though Yuquil is a human, he is representing the Dragoon. And he's an outsider. He's a foreigner! Um. Lucky foreigner. Yeah. So. 
while you guys were walking towards Peng Shun, the, the, not Peng Shun, but the Forgotten City, to, uh, to check things out, uh, you guys were walking down in there, we're, we're rewinding now to that. Uh, everybody was, you know, talking and taking in the sights and the different architecture and the, and the, just the all around difference of this place as compared to your homeland there, which <clears throat> I guess you would say is the nation of White Sword there in the continent of Siren, but uh, here in the Forgotten City, everything seems different. You know, it's far more mountainous and the trees are, the trees, the plants, the architecture, everything is different. And Elsa, <clears throat> while you were walking alongside everybody kind of taking in the architecture, you feel a slight tug on your on your leg and you realize that it's your shadow Biggs and he's kind of he's he's attempting to get your attention he's just like tugging at your at your dress and he's like your your tattered your beautifully tattered dress <laughs> that Sebastian gave you and he's sitting there tugging at you and he's just like Paisana Paisana talk to you for a minute and he sounds like he's like ready to barf like he he sounds like he's just any moment now he wants to lurch like <clears throat> uh you know when you have like an upset stomach and everything you say it sounds forced because it's like you're having to spew forth your words fast enough to reclose your mouth before it's followed by actual vomit it's like bizarre bizarre And also, finds a, does what she does best and uh, just disappears. She does what? She disappears into the shadows somewhere. Oh, I see. She, like, steps off away from everybody. She's like, I'm going to dip over here. <clears throat> <laughs> when you do that, you watch... Uh, once you are safely within the shadows of just some, some random building, it's like you... Uh, it's almost like ducking into an alleyway, but the alleyways aren't as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Profound here. You know, like in in the city of White Sword, you're used to the alleyways clearly being marked. Like, that is an alleyway for sure. It's got buildings on both sides. Maybe it's a dead end, or maybe it'll take you out onto another connecting street on the backside of these said buildings. Uh because the buildings don't actually wall off quite like that. It is all wide gaps. The only indication that, you know, this may be an actual alleyway is the fact that it looks like people kind of put their waste from whatever businesses or whatever in these uh, designated spots here. So, <clears throat> and it is, it is somewhat remote. You know, there's not a lot going on here in, in this said alleyway, but there is a little bit of traffic just because of the festival. So, as soon as you are safely within the shadows of this of this alley, uh, you know, Biggs kind of forms himself up, you know, detaching from your shadow and becoming your shadow just in more tangible form. And you see he's like holding his stomach and he's like, oh, I don't, I don't feel so good. You watch as like, <clears throat> you've been noticing here lately that like your shadow almost looks like it's got like heat signatures coming off of it. Uh, when, you know, like when you're in, when it's really hot outside, you can see the heat waves playing with your eyes. It kind of looks like that, only in shadow form, almost like tendrils, almost like like just heat signatures are coming off of his his body. He's like, something's something's really wrong here. I think. Ugh. He goes. I'm sorry. What were you gonna say? She's like, um, what you want me to do, Pedro? No. It's like I don't, I don't know. I was hoping maybe you, you, you knew what was happening to me. 
uh, the she's like the only thing I can think of is that you're changing to look like me other than that I don't know he goes I guess that that might make sense he goes after all I technically I I wasn't because the six foot shadow behind the 12 the four foot 12 year old don't make much sense by song he goes ah oh. Yeah, I suppose that's right. Ugh. He goes, it, it just feels wonky. He goes, uh, oh, yeah. She pulls a dead rat out of her dress. She's like, here, try this. <laughs> he looks at it for a minute and he like slowly reaches out and grabs it out of her, out of her hand and he looks at it. And for a minute there, you know, he kind of looks like he's almost disgusted by it. But then he just, like, devours it. Something comes over him and he devours it. And he's like, oh, my God. Because, <sighs> like, you watch it as this. When he eats, he doesn't eat, like, you, like taking bites. It's almost like his shadow form just completely devours it. Like, absolves it into his, into him. He's like, I've never... <clears throat> I've never done that before. It's good, no? He goes, yeah, actually. See, everybody hates my food till they eat it. Then they're like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> he goes, well. Judge me. <clears throat> he goes, that's, I think, I think you might be onto something here. <sighs> you know, when I was a part of Egg, I best represented Egg. Maybe because I've somehow managed to combine with you now. Maybe I have to go through some kind of metamorphosis. Oh, I don't. She's like, I don't know what that means, but okay. He's like, I'm being transmogrified now. Uh, he, <laughs> he says, I'm I'm changing to best suit you. I'll just. Cut a couple inches off the bottom. You'll be all right. You should. You'll match my size. He goes, no, it's it's not even just that. He goes, when I was with Eck, <clears throat> I knew everything there was to know about Eck. I still know everything there is to know about Eck. He goes, but now I'm learning things about you. Because I'm... When I was with Eck, it was like I was Eck, but I'm not Eck. If that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, it doesn't really make much sense to me either. But now that I'm with you, it's almost like it's he goes, it's all Meshuggah up here, you know? Like he the He goes he Paison, Paison, she like puts her hand on him. Paison, Paison, I got you. If you need a clear, just tell me. Alright, I got you. <laughs> he's, he's like no it's like I'm, I'm unlocking your thoughts like inner thoughts he goes uh, it's like I'm walking through like down a hallway going through doors and he goes and you've, you've got one there that is and he kind of shudders for a minute he says you've got a door you've never opened Is there's She's like, well, yeah, I don't really, I'm not too big on doors, you know. Usually, you get, like, you know, this one time I had this dude that tied me up, put me in this room, and shut the door, so doors aren't my thing. Says, yeah, the the wizard, right? Yeah, 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 fuck that guy. Yeah, the, the one, he's got, like, a mark on his forehead, and he looks at your badge, and he goes, and he's wearing one of those. Yeah. I yeah. still don't know what all's going on with that. But... Says it's it's weird. He goes, uh, and he's like, see, I sh I know that now about you. Like I I see you running as a small child with your pack. He goes, said you you've eaten some interesting things in your day, and he kind of sits straightens up for a minute. He goes, you've, you've done some some weird... <clears throat> Regardless of that, you 
because you you haven't somebody locked that door in your mind you don't know what's behind that door do you I ain't even know there's a door I don't know how there's a door in my head but okay he goes it's it's more like a memory he goes I'm, I'm saying door because that's the way I see it he goes, but, <clears throat> I mean, for you, it's just your memory. You have a repressed memory, but you didn't choose to repress it. It was repressed for you. He's like, I could, and then he kind of, he kind of doubles over for a minute, like he's got, like, bad gas or something. He's like, I could, Ugh! oh, he's like, I could, Ugh! and then you watch as he begins to, like, vomit. But it's like the weirdest thing, it's like, as he vomits, he's vomiting shadow. And the more shadow he vomits, the more he disintegrates into himself. Like, he's almost disintegrating into his own vomit. Till eventually he just becomes a pool on the ground, and he's just a shadow once more. But, your shadow is now this pool of shade. It has no actual form or function like as you try to test it like you wave your hand no no hand shadow hand appears there it just remains this pool this this black puddle that <clears throat> for all intents and purposes is a shadow but that's its form Elsa reaches down she pats the ground she goes it's okay Bazano. But that was fucking gross. Don't ever do that again. <laughs> As you're doing that, um, you, uh, you hear lots of laughter and things, and you, uh, watch as many different kinds of, uh, people are marching into the city. Like, way, many, many different kinds of races, and we'll go over them real quick, just because you, you weren't here for the that the last session but like you basically see the equivalent of what would be like well you know you know the bunzai which are just rabbit folk right mm -hmm. and then you see these these humanoid rats they are <clears throat> they're they're tall though they're 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 at least as tall as android you know but they're rats they're humanoid rat folk if you will and you see the same thing with like bears. These are bear men, but they're not like bear any bear you've ever seen before. They're white and black, and their faces have like uh, markings on them that make them look like they're wearing bandit masks. Um, you see fox, basically the same, the equivalent of fox people. Uh, you see men who look like bulls, but they're more uh, akin to ox. You see folk who are a race of animal, and these are all humanoids. So, like, think like were folk, if you will. Um, you see people who look like they're animals who you've never seen before. They've got like animals like you've never seen before. They've got tails and uh, <clears throat> their feet, their big toes look almost like opposable thumbs like they could use their feet to grab things and stuff um you see people who look like dogs not wolves but dogs like canine you're you're watching as you see all these different kinds of uh races also there's another race that look like little frogmen who we touched on earlier in the intro um you see these different kinds of races, but <clears throat> while while that's happening, your ears kind of prick up for a minute as you hear something, some people talking down an alleyway, and you distinctly hear them talking about what sounds like they're talking about you and your group, or at least your group, <clears throat> the Inglorious Few, and they're they're trying to keep it in hush whisper, and you can't really tell make out. Who, what kind of race they are, per se, but there is 
I will say. Um. Well, where are they? Go lay down. There is three of them. Uh. And they're all hooded. They're all cloaked, so you can't tell what kind of race or anything. But one of them is looks to be a very large man or a very large person. One of them is smaller and slender, and the other just looks to be about medium, medium build. And they're all sitting there talking for a minute. Uh, you instantly make out that one of them is female. The 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 more slender figure standing over there, and they're they're talking. And one of them says, <clears throat> "Well, I don't know. I don't know where they come. All I know is that one of them has been entered in the Jing Zoo." As the representative of the dragoon. Some kind of rumor about a chosen or something. That's all the information I could get at it. And that's so that's what we're gonna work with. But if we're gonna get this done, we're gonna we're gonna have to find a way to work around them. You hear the bigger one say, <clears throat> I could enter the Jing Su and, and take their uh, take their champion out. That would that would handle at least one of them, and uh, the medium build one says, "No, no, no, no! It's too late for that. We could have done that beforehand, but uh, the contestants have already been decided. We're just going to have to uh, deal with the rest of them, and and hopefully somebody takes the one in the contest out." And then the slender one, she says, Well, it's not going to do us any good to stand here and, and talk anymore. And then she says a, a word, a, maybe a name. And if you're going to catch that, because this is a foreign language, and if it wasn't for Mazaru, you wouldn't really know what they were saying at all. But because she, she cast that spell on you guys earlier, you know, you're at least able to make this out. But... To hear this, I'm gonna need you to roll a listen. And to me, I'm, as they're talking, Elsa's thinking, she's like, oh, if Biggs is becoming me, she's like, I wonder if I can become him. <laughs> and she like, tries to like, be a shadow and kind of like, get closer where she can see them, like make a face or something. Okay. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> if you can, if you can get, uh, uh, I'll tell you what, roll a move silently, and if you can do that correctly, like without being spotted, I won't make you roll that listen to see if you catch that last, that, that, that word, okay? I got you, I got you. Because then you'll be close enough that you'll hear the word, it just may not mean anything to you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Is it for a uh, subscription to Roll20? Off the top. That'll help at all. I think we're going to have to individually switch to a different program. Yeah. I mean, because it just works it's slow. Like it's... Mine didn't even work. Yeah. It just works slow. I don't really understand what the heck. Um. Okay. So you managed to be the shadows and sneak up there close enough to see. Now, because they are cloaked, you can't really make out their features other than the fact that up close, you can tell like by their hands and stuff because their hands are at least exposed. You can tell their hands don't look bestial like most of the races here. They, they strike you as human, you know? But you are for certain now that it is two men and a woman, you know? 
and you, based upon what you can see, now that you are closest, you stalk down the, the alleyway area to them and kind of uh, bounce from building to building, sort of, trying to stay as close to the side as you possibly can so you can hide behind barrels and crates of different th- of different sorts. Um, <clears throat> you hear the female say, the name, or the word, I should say, the word Zaguchi. She says, it'll do us no good to sit here and talk about this any longer. Zaguchi is waiting on us. We need to go. And the, the, the medium build man, man he, he looks at her and he says, fair enough. Let us go. <clears throat> and they, they turn and begin to uh, walk. What do you do? She's gonna make a mental note of that name. She was assuming it's a name mm-hmm. based on what she heard. Okay. Uh, Zaguchi. That is, uh, if you're if you're wanting to make a note of it, it is spelled Z E G U C H I. Gucci bag. Gucci main. The Gucci main. <laughs> after they, after she gets the name, she's just gonna kind of like follow them, but not where she can be noticed. She's kind of like kind of make it look like she's blending in with crowds of people as they're going wherever they're going. <laughs> okay, so. They take you to a, a, to the opposite side of the Forgotten City. Like that, that alleyway does connect with an with an opposite street. Everybody else went walking down the main path from the the palace <clears throat> downward, and you veered off to the to the right, and you've ducked down this alleyway now. So I want you to think of it as you've basically gone maybe like two streets over because they they cut across one street and then they head down another alley and they begin to uh cross another street and as you're as you're following them again you uh see other different kinds of of people and whatnot uh small children are outside like lighting these these little sticks that sparkle when they do, and then when they throw them, they pop. Their and uh, that piques your interest, just because it's extremely chaotic, and it looks like something they allow small children to do. But oh, yeah. Elsa <clears throat> snags a handful of them as she's making her way through the crowd. Roll me a sleight of hand. <laughs> Roll me a sleight of hand, please. She's like, ooh, I need one of those. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. I kind of knew that it would be some like Elsa's bag, to uh, <laughs> something like that would be like in Elsa's wheelhouse. Like looking at that and being like, oh, that's neat. All right, so yeah, she's like sneaking through the crowd, and she's like whips by some kids. She like rips them out of their hand and dips through the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, got him. Uh, <laughs> so this action. One. What you got? I'll tell you what you got right now. You got. Oh. Uh, and here's some kid in the background going, what? Yeah, yeah. You got a, uh, what, you, you got what they call, uh, poppers. Just like a handful of poppers, right? But they're, they're, they're not little poppers, right? These, these, uh, require you to light them and throw them. Uh, 
in the right situations, they can work like Thunderstones. I'm just telling you that now. Word. Yeah. Which I don't know why I'm telling you that. I should just be like, they do something. <laughs> Find out. Oh, but whatever. <laughs> now, you know, cat's out of the bag. Um, But only in the right situations. Uh, that I will say. That you'll have to figure out what is the right situation to do something like this. You know? And they do require some kind of... Uh, some kind of flame to light them, right? So, um, but yeah, you just you just take a some little uh, dragoon kid. He's got some in his hand, and Elsa, you just walk by and just yank him right out of his hand. He's like, "Hey!" And you just <laughs> continue on down the alley. Uh, <clears throat> finally, they take you over, like I said, two streets over, and. They begin walking down and trying to vanish within this crowd with they're all hooded up and everything and they're you know uh, there are multitudes of people some of them are walking some of them are gathered in areas some of them are outside playing uh games and, and different things um at one point they they all three stop you you see the the medium the medium man he just kind of stops for a minute and he just kind of sniffs the air or something and his shoulders kind of roll back almost like he's got like this feeling I need you to roll a hide Okay, he, uh, <clears throat> so you kind of just kind of meld in with a crowd of people and just kind of hang back, keeping an eye on their position. He, he stops and he stops the others and he kind of looks over his shoulder. And when he does, you can see inside his hood. Um, it is kind of crowded. So if you want to get a better, like, just a more distinct description of his face you're gonna have to roll a spot because it's gonna require you to kind of you know oh yeah I got you, I got you. so you don't because his hood is low and the sun is in in such a direction you don't make out his entire face but you do make out a little bit of like his his profile just right under his eye is his uh his cheekbone on the on the side of his face and his nose and his mouth he uh <clears throat> he definitely looks human um from what you can make out of him you can see that he's got a uh, a finely trimmed beard and mustache with a goatee and you see a kind of a sparkling on his ear as if he's got a one of those hoop earrings but uh his full face you just you cannot quite make out now uh <clears throat> you can tell that he's one of the uh uh what would you call it he's indigenous he's he's definitely human but he's an indigenous human to the continent of pangshun so uh, which doesn't give you much because at this point there are plenty of people you wouldn't be able to like point him out in a lineup per se let, let me put it like that and he kind of looks around for a minute and you can tell he's kind of darting around and uh you almost have to respect the fact that you've been following them and he just he's just doing this pure on pure instinct almost like he knows he's being followed you don't know how but it's uh <clears throat> it gives you the distinct impression that okay this this is also a very trained man you know he's looking around and he kind of shrugs for a minute and he uh, 
motions for the others to continue to follow, and they begin walking again as you uh, continue your pursuit. They they eventually walk all the way down to the the Forgotten City. Basically, sits on the beach. You know, the ocean, the starboard seas, come up to to the very banks of the Forgotten City. And there are docks out here for fishing boats and things like that. You wouldn't really call it like some grand port city, but it is. It they they definitely have their own uh, style. You know, it's more like a fishing community, though, more than I guess you would say like a marina or um a navy, as it were. And as they come down closer to these docks and whatnot, you see them pick just a shack, a nondescript shack, really. Uh, it does have a sign outside the door, but the whatever the words are on it, you you can't read this language, <laughs> you know. But it, it definitely uh, it definitely has a name, and it looks like there's people coming in and out of there, and some people are sitting outside, and you know that this has to be a tavern of some sort because uh, everybody around it looks drunk. Its architecture too is that more of what you're used to. It's it's a wooden shack. It, it's not the fine uh, the architecture. The door gives it away. Yeah, exactly. There and they they all three enter it. It's not an incredibly large shack either, but it is it is good sized. I'd say it looks like it's really just one room, just like this one room place. And like I said, it's it's not the biggest, but it it's not small either. So they dip inside this shack, this uh, tavern, as it were. Elsa's is gonna like try to find a window to peek in or something to see what she can see in there. All right. Um. <clears throat> yeah. No. There's no need for rolling required for that. You. Uh. This place does have uh, a couple of windows on the front of it, so you uh. You just kind of crawl up there real slow and peek your head up through there, you know, uh, <clears throat> you notice that it, it doesn't have, the, these windows aren't glassed over or anything like that. These are all, this is all open, uh, architecture, but the inside of them has shutters for, for closing up at night. And as you peek in there, you your like your senses are instantly assaulted with like the smells of what smells like a uh, burning smoke and liquor of some sort, and <clears throat> the smell of fish and sweaty people. You can tell that this is a uh, this is what they would call a dive back where you're from. As you poke in there, you watch as the uh, cloaked figures all just take a seat off to the side there, and they all three sit down, and um, a uh, dragoon girl comes up to them and begins to try and take their order, and they, they wave her off, and you can see that they're sitting there. You, you can't really hear it over the crowd. You would have to strain or try to find a way to get closer, but you can see that they're at least discussing something with each other now, once again. And, uh... <clears throat> that's... Yeah, that's pretty much what you can gather from that, from your position. Can she, like, get around to a different window or something to make out their faces better? Um, yeah, the window that you're at right now is, is, uh, 
basically the farthest window. It's the one closest to the entrance. There is one more that will put you almost, uh, not parallel, but you will have to be uh, careful, more careful, because that window, even though it will put you in, they will put it will put them in your line of sight. It will also put you in their line of sight. And <clears throat> so, uh, trying to see them will will also put you in danger of them possibly seeing you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I only bring that up is because you are a foreigner. You do, you have been sticking out like a sore thumb this entire time. Like every once in a while, somebody just kind of looks at you and regards you like strangely, but they, you know, <clears throat> because of the Jing Zhu, nobody is trying to cause any problems. Nobody wants to screw up and cause a problem that could potentially end the Jing Zhu. Yeah. Well, she's gonna uh, attempt to make her way to that window and uh, take a gander. All right. Uh. All right. So you uh, creep over to that window and you oh peek your head over there. And the only one that's really in your line of sight really well is the the female. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead and just well. Yeah, I I'm, I'm going to say roll me another spot simply because of the uh simply because the place is full and full of people and so So <clears throat> you can see that she is a, a an indigenous woman to Peng Shun as well, the continent. Uh, but you make out her face better than you did. Like if you had to pick her out of a lineup, you would remember this face. Uh, she she looks like to be a young girl, maybe the age, you know, just because she's human, you would guess she's probably like 23, maybe. Her hair isn't long and dark, though, like uh, like you've seen from some of the other Peng Shun women. Uh, her hair is actually a little bit lighter, maybe like a lighter brown, maybe an auburn. She doesn't really wear, she's not wearing any kind of like uh, makeup. And the reason why I point this out is because you've noticed that a lot of Peng Shun women do wear quite a bit of makeup. Um, even the lords and ladies of your homeland wear a, a, a type of makeup, mostly. But this, this girl it doesn't seem to be wearing any kind of, like, rouge or blush or anything. And despite all that, she's actually pretty. She, she's got a natural beauty to her, these soft features and, and eyes. Um, but she, she oddly looks young almost too young to be hanging out with to be conspiring with men such as this but it's when you look in her eyes that you sense a certain kind of danger like she's she's far more dangerous than her features would let on it would lead you to believe you know uh she's got more miles in them than a girl typically of her age Said she put it on. <laughs> uh, you can roll and listen and see if you can't strain to to hear some of the things that they're talking about. Even though this the shack does have noise. <clears throat> so as they're speaking, the uh, you hear the big one the rather large man and he is a large man the now that you're cl much closer you see that he he's he rivals you quill you know you quill is not a small human and neither is this man uh he's even a slightly girthier 
And <clears throat> what she said. Yeah. He he says. I don't know why we're waiting so long. If we just ambush them on the way to the city now, then then what will it hurt? Right? And you hear the female say, that is your problem. You're always wanting to just break things. Not everything is a nail to be hammered. We, of course, it is not my call. I am not the leader. And the uh, big one says, <clears throat> well, I mean, not all of us can be as finesse as you, I suppose. And then he says, he sa he calls her something, but I'm going to need you to roll another listen, because then it, again, you are at a distance, and it is a foreign language to you. So you don't make out the entire name, but you do catch the name. You catch the word Jin. He says, "Not all of us can be as as finesse as you, Jin." And oh, the the crowd, the murmuring of the crowd, kind of drowns out the rest of it. He says, "Jin," but <clears throat> I've always found that my technique works well. If something needs killing, you kill it. And that's when the. Uh, medium-sized man pipes in and he says quit your bickering you two Zaguchi will be here soon and when he gets here he'll let us know what we're supposed to do Go lay down. and it's about that time that <clears throat> Elsa you get this feeling it is a, a feeling. yeah like a <laughs> um <laughs> it a uh, it, it's like fingers. You've heard the expression fingers down your spine, right? Like chills, like something like a spider's legs going down your spine. Only this is much different than that. It feels like like spider legs, but instead of going down your spine, it's almost like it's going up your spine. As if to say up until this this happened, you were empty and now you're being filled. And it is a eerie feeling. It, it almost feels like ice water in your blood, in your veins. And you can't help but turn and look in the direction as if it's drawing your, your attention to it. And you see this man come walking towards the shack. He's not coming through the city, in fact. he's he's. It's like he's walking down the beach, almost as if walking through the city is too, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Would be almost too conspicuous. He's, <clears throat> he doesn't wear a cloak. He freely, uh, shows everything there is to him uh, that there is to see. He, has a uh, straw wide brim hat on that covers his eyes and he's got long hair with a fine cut beard and, and mustache as well as he wears uh, the clothes that are common to these lands. But what really catches your attention is the sword that is on his hip. It's not, it's not like a sword you've ever seen. Or maybe it is, because it seems pretty common, but there is something about it. It's got this eerie aspect to it, and you realize that it's not so much the man that is drawing your attention as much as it is this sword, because your eyes can't help but fall upon this sword. As he, as he approaches... Well, why isn't it showing it? I don't know if that showed up in the Discord chat or not. It gave me a link. And I don't know why I gave a link instead of... I don't know why I gave a link instead of a... 
Well, here. Um, no, don't download it. I, I got a way around it. Hold on. Okay, well, real quick, I'm gonna let you know that I'm getting some bad weather rolling in, mm -hmm. and our lights just flicker and stuff. So, if we, it, if we drop out at some point, I'm sorry. It's alright. If that happens, if it, if it gets to that point, we can always finish up Elsa tonight group her up back with the group and that just that just means everybody else was just here for for this but we can always pick up next next session too you know what i mean i'm the sexiest bitch alive well, well we'll find out we'll find out um but yeah i don't like next one's about dragon ball z i do have, yeah i do have but yeah so they're that's the best representation i could come up with for this particular uh imagery that I'm trying to relate, but he comes walking up, and it's almost like everybody around him almost knows who he is because swaths of people kind of part like the Red Z, like the Red Sea, just getting out of his way as he approaches the shack, and um, as he comes walking by, he does. It, it transfixes you, Elsa. Just this, uh, this man. He has got you transfixed. So much so that it doesn't even occur to you to, like, get out of the way or, or anything. But he, as he enters, he does look in your direction as you're sitting there at the window. He looks at you for a minute as if he's regarding you, but then looks away and enters into the shack. Um. It's not... It's almost like a nonchalant in the way that he does it. It's, it's like... He's acknowledging your presence, but not making a thing out of it. As it were. As he, as he enters into the shack. And the second he does that, everybody just kind of stops for a minute, and uh, you watch as people literally dragoon and these these bear men and these different fox folk and, and stuff like that. They they all get up and kind of move out the door past him, and even the uh, dragoon man who's running the bar, he uh, stops cleaning what he's cleaning and sets down the cup and motions for the two dragoon girls who are basically the serving wenches and they go to the back room the only other room in this place they they go to the back room and just that you know vanish get out of get out of the line of sight and <clears throat> once the room is good and cleared the man walks up to the table and now you can hear everything as distinctly as as it were you know and he walks up to to the three and he says <clears throat> there has been a change of plans we've lost the contract we won't be the ones handling the uh what's the word I'm looking for we won't be the ones handling the I can't. Why can't I think of this freaking word? We 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 won't be the ones handling the assassination. It won't be us. We lost it to the some others. And the medium-sized man says, "Who?" And the man with the sword says, "It doesn't matter who. We lost the contract." Which means that our purpose here in the Forgotten City is now null and void. It would be that way anyways, had I not gotten us another contract. We need to go meet the client immediately. And I'm going to need you all to start acting a little bit more discreet in your comings and goings. And that's when the big man says, I thought we were being discreet. And the man with the sword says, if you were being so discreet, then how come you've got a foreigner spying on you from the window right now? And he points at you, Elsa. 
<laughs> doesn't look at you. He just points in your direction. As Elsa here, like as she's as he says that discreet, she's like, "Oh, that's for time." Just jump, gone. <laughs> she's like, "I've been spotted. I'm out." Yeah, it's at that time too. Like in the background, you can hear like faintly hear them going, what are you talking about? And like, hear them like turning over tables and stuff. And uh, <clears throat> for whatever reason, you do hear the man, like, even though you're at a good distance now, because you're just taking off on, we'll say on all fours, even just, <clears throat> you know, you went by, you went freaking bipedaled on this one. Just whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, like, I'm gone. For whatever reason, though, even though you can hear them in the distance yelling, for whatever reason, you do hear the one, his voice, uh, as if he's standing right next to you and he says, forget about it, she's gone now. We'll deal with them later. As you go running down the beach, uh, you spend the rest of the afternoon, late into the night, uh, kind of just wandering around, wondering where you should go now, until the sun starts to go down, and you watch as the sun is starting to go down, uh, eventually you come up to a spot on the beach where you can see people building this large, like, giant stage, as if something's about to happen here, you know? And you watch as these familiar uh, people uh, start walking out towards that stage. Um, they, uh, you recognize them, they are the, the performers that, when you were in the underworld at the alcove, they were the ones performing on the stage. They're not people from Peng Shun either. They seem to have, uh, <clears throat> they seem to have a motley crew of different people from different all walks of Loxos, as it were, you know? And the only reason why you remember them is because you remember, like, they had the, they had the guy in the green jacket, who, the red-headed guy in the green jacket who was playing the lute. The leprechaun. Yeah. Um. And, and whatnot, but now they have others with them as well. Um. They have other people with them as well. They have a woman with a large-looking beast that she uh, she's making almost like they're practicing uh, tricks and stuff. And she's she's like whipping her whip in the air as not whipping him per se. She's just whipping it in the air, and every time it cracks, it's like a cue for it to to like perform a certain kind of trick. And then she. She uses like call signs and stuff and and whatnot. And the sun is starting to set. And as the sun begins to set, you watch as uh <clears throat> you hear this loud gong just gong. And you watch as people begin to gather around this stage and the sun is just basically just barely on the horizon as a whole crowd of people are walking through the Forgotten City towards this stage. And by the time the sun sets, all these paper lanterns light up and some are on strings, like draped across things to, to give natural light. Others are lit and tossed into the air as they float up into the air. And then you watch as these balls of light begin to like shoot off into the sky and then burst into like billions of uh, multicolored lights to which you have never seen before and they when they do they they crack in the sky like thunder and lightning they're just <laughs> when they're just going off and you watch as this um very large woman uh carrying the equivalent of a cannon on her shoulder walks up to the beach and begins blasting these balls of light. That's not what I wanted. Blasting these balls of light into the sky and just exploding them and and uh, creating more um, 
creating more of them. And and when I say she is a large woman, I mean like she is probably one of the most muscular women you have ever seen in your life. Because that cannon probably weighs as much as you do, if not a little bit more. And she's just boom. <clears throat> and then the band begins to play. They just, you know, start up their their gig. And it's it's pretty interesting. Uh, you hear somebody, you watch this one man who is finely dressed with a wide brim hat who basically calls himself the entertainer. He uh, he's, he announces the beginning of the Jing Zoo, and you realize that this is the this is the actual beginning of the festival in of itself. As he's just out there, you know, doing some showmanship, he's like. Welcome everyone to the Honor Jing Zoo. He's like, I am Dirk Danger, the ringleader, and these are the players. And he starts naming them all off one by one. And then you watch as he uh, suddenly looks into the crowd and he says, Whoa, ho, ho, as you watch as Android climbs up onto the stage. And he says, we have a, we seem to have ourselves a, a guest here. I bring you an android, or should I say Lord Android, prison of prison manor. And you kind of hear, he watches androids just kind of sitting there telling him to chill. Like, hmm. Yeah, those, those are chill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh. Basically, Android begins playing with them and they begin to play music and you watch as this circle of people, they begin to play Dracula by Rob Zombie. And, <laughs> and, a, <laughs> and a circle of people begin to gather in the midst of the crowd and begin to just beat the crap out of one another. Yeah, yeah and then you watch as freaking uh, you Quill joins in and just starts body slamming people. So, as all that's going on, Elsa's like looking around for shit to light her poppers with and a change of clothes. All right. So, so she's like finding like pieces of little, uh, kids' clothing and like stashing it so she could change clothes later. <laughs> cool. Uh, as far as like looking for something to light the. Uh, the poppers with she uh you notice that some of there's other little kids there too and they're running around with what looks like little sticks you you know what incense is you just yeah. but these don't burn like incense but they're a continuous burn and the kids are taking these little sticks and lighting their poppers with them and throwing them and just you know and you can see a man just kind of peddling them for free. He's just handing them out to the kids for free. He's got like a little box strapped to his stomach, you know, and he's just walking around. He's like, oh, here you go, children. Here you go. Yes, yes. Just handing them out. She goes and takes one from him. He like stops and looks at you and goes, oh, you're not from around here, are you? And he hands you the, the stick. He goes, we call... She's like, uh, thank you. He says, we call that a punk. He goes, here. And he, oh, over the top of it, slaps some uh, splint and steel to light it. And he tips it upside down for you and then blows it out. Once he's done, it's just got this cherry red burning ember on the tip of it. And he goes, you light, you light your fireworks with those. He goes, welcome. Like, uh, okay. He says, welcome to the Honor Jing Zoo. He's a dragoon man with a very long beard, and he just reaches out and pats you on the head, and he goes, have fun, children. She grabs his hand before she, he pats her, and he's like, no. <laughs> Don't touch me, bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll me a spot. Oh, 
Okay. So, as you're doing that, um, you begin, you know, lighting your poppers and throwing them off. Just pow, pow. Now, they don't do the dancing colors or anything, but there is a satisfying, like, explosion that happens. And you see a group of children over there. Uh, some of them are dragoons. Some of them are these little children bear people. Some of them are little fox kids, you know, little bunny kids. Some of them are just straight up humans, you know, and some of them are even rat children. And you see them over there, like, all doing stuff and making, like, loud explosions. Boom! And they're all laughing. Ha 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 And it's, there's something oddly satisfying about it. So when you spot them, you walk over and they just all look at you all crazy for a minute. And they're all quiet. They all kind of stiffen up. And eventually one of the, the little rat child, he goes, How do you get your hair that color? So clearly they've never right. seen <laughs> Huh? She goes, uh, I don't know. I just made this way. I'm like, whoa. The, the little the little tubby little bear man, he reaches out and kind of brushes it. He goes, oh, pretty. And the fox girl slaps his face and she goes, you don't, you don't just touch people, stupid. This is like, uh, yeah, thank you. Don't touch me. She goes, the little fox girl goes, you have to forgive him. Bolo don't know what he's doing. He comes from a very low intellect race. Bolo's like, <laughs> yeah. She goes, I'm Kiza. She points at the little rat kid and she goes, and that's Tui. She points at the little human boy and she goes, that's Shin. And then, and then she points at the dragoon kid and, and she says, and that's, uh, oh, man. I Eco says, "What's your name?" Uh, it, Elsa. Elsa. <clears throat> Elsa. Well, it was like Elsa, and they're like, "Well, welcome, Elsa. We were just blowing up apples," and they pull out another popper and a decent apple and pop it in there and light it and throw it off and it booms! I mean, it's just a satisfying just explosion, you know? Something that, like, for the first time in your life, you're relating something to your childhood mind more than anything else. <laughs> something about destruction just appeases you in, in, your, in your child nature. They're like, cool, huh? <laughs> down, down, down. Yeah. It's like, uh, can I have a couple of those? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they hand you some poppers. <laughs> to go on top of the poppers you already have. <laughs> just like collecting poppers. She's just yeah. stuffing them in her pockets and shit. I'm going to say you probably at this point have like 25 poppers. Just to make note of it. Yeah. Um. Eventually, Tui, he produces like a string of them. They're they're smaller, but they're but they they come on like a what looks like a bandolier of them with one singular uh, fuse to it. He says, "Now watch this," and he sets it down on the beach and puts a pot over it and then lights it and then he's like now watch and when it pops off it's just <laughs> and they're all just dancing around it like yeah yeah <laughs> and then it finally stops and they're like his <laughs> bull is like oh i like that i like that so much finally uh <clears throat> Izo, she uh, looks at you and she says, 
You know, you're a foreigner, aren't you, the little dragoon girl? She's like, my daddy was talking about some weird looking people that came into the village the other day. They said they had a little girl with them. Is that you? Like, uh, I guess so. She says, cool. She says, is this your first Jingzu? Yup, first one. It's like, awesome. They're like, well, <clears throat> should we, should we initiate her? And Tui says, I don't know if she can handle it. Like, come on, we should let her in the club. Finally, Izo, she looks at you again. She goes, you want in our club? What's your club? What's it for? We're called the... We're called the... Penny Dreadfuls. Why not? <laughs> we'll go with that. We're, we're, the, we're called the Penny Dreadfuls. Bolus is in for a penny, in for a pound. Why? This is like, looks at him like, why that name? Well, <clears throat> in Kizo, she says, well, because we're quite poor, and honestly, the things we do, most adults would say is dreadful. Bolo says, in for a penny, in for a pound. She says, yes, we got it. We got it. We got it. She's, yeah. That's the looks at her. She's like, why don't you call yourselves the dead collectors instead? She says, well, because <clears throat> nobody owes us any debts. They don't know that. Tui goes, why? Does anybody owe you any debts? I'm sort of like, so stands there for a second. And she's like, mm. I mean, probably, but I can't remember. It's at this point that, uh, uh, Kiko, she says, what exactly is a debt? Anyways. <laughs> Also, it's like, eh, it's when somebody owes you something. Like, you did something for them, so now they have to do something for you. Ooh! That would make us really good, wouldn't it? Yeah. She's like, okay. Tell you what, if you want in in our group, we'll, uh, you go collect us a debt, and we'll let you in the in the group. Tui says, yeah, we'll even recall, we'll even rename ourselves the debt collectors. Yeah! Do they use normal currency here? Like, would anywhere else? No. Elsa hasn't seen that. Uh, Elsa knows that they, yeah, that they use a different kind of currency called win. It's, it's like a mixture of clay and copper to form a coin. Shin goes, I know somebody who, the little human boy, he goes, I know somebody who might, oh, who she might be able to get a debt from. And they're just like, who? He goes, well, <clears throat> he says the, the guy over there who's, uh, ripping everybody off at the, at the, at, at, at his little game over there in the stand who's with these performers. He's like, I've been, I, I watch him. I've been watching him and he, uh, yeah, he's ripping people off. If we steal his money, then he'll owe us a debt for more money for giving back his money. Isn't that how that works? And so looks at him and she's like, uh, not really. Two, he goes, well, what about if one of us steals his money and he doesn't know that we're all in on it together and then you Ilse, Ilsa 
You, Ilsa, you tell him that you'll get his money back if he gives you money. And then I'll just give him back, I'll just give you back his money. Will that work? That's more like it. That's better than whatever, whatever his name is. <laughs> Shin's like, I don't know, I forgot your name already. Shin's like, oh. <laughs> Everybody kind of laughs. <laughs> and they're like, all right, let's do it then. So you all go creeping up to this, this dude. This dude is basically playing dice. They don't know the name of this game. Like, they've never... You know, it is a foreign game to him, and he's like peddling it. He's like, "Come one, come all, take your press your luck against me." You know, he's he's. Um, it's basically just a uh, carny game, as it were, and people are betting against him to see if they can beat him in dice. And you do watch as he uh, he begin. He like every once in a while he. Some people beat him, but some people he he actually talks into playing like heavier bets, and when they do that, he he wrecks them. <laughs> he basically switches dice on them real swift and rips them off. And Shin's just like, "See, I told you, I told you, he's cheating people." And it's at this time, Elsa, while you're watching, you watch as Zoltan of all people come walking up and begins playing dice with this man. And uh, also just sees it, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Zoltan gets in pretty heavy with him, and then he tries to rip on Zoltan, but Zoltan like catches him, and uh, a conversation ensues, an argument ensues when you watch as a uh, slender Peng Shun woman comes walking up and resolves the matter, and then asks, uh. And, and get Zoltan's money back plus and then invite Zoltan to her tent to uh, speak with him privately <clears throat> they uh <clears throat> so Zoltan goes wandering off with her and Tui kind of Tui sits there for a minute the little rat kid and he's like Okay, so that's the... So, that guy just got away with a lot of money from him, right? So, if we tell him instead, instead of stealing from him, if we tell him that we'll steal that money back from that guy, then... Then we'll... Then then he'll, he'll give us some money, right? And he'll owe us a debt, right? Is that how that works? Okay, then kinda. So should we just go steal the money back from that guy? And then give it and then tell the guy we'll give him back his money if he gives us money? What's this like? Uh, you guys stay here. I'll be back in a minute. And she go goes to follow Zoltan. <laughs> You, uh, <clears throat> crawl up to the tent, and while you're getting up there, um, you realize that the tent is very small and that it would be impossible for you to go inside, so you kind of just wait out there until Zoltan and the woman exit the tent with each other. <laughs> And Zoltan and her, uh, you watch as Zoltan is standing there now watching the, uh, the performance, and you watch as the woman kind of fades into shadow. She's, like, standing by his side, but then she fades into shadow, and when she reappears, she's already, like, a ways away from him, and she's out there, like, talking to other people, now taking their palms in their hands and looking like she's talking about whatever's in the inside of their hand. It's all very strange because you're just like, what's so important about a person's hand? You know? But you're, uh, you know, you can see Zoltan just kind of standing there, uh, watching the, uh, the performance. As, he, as he's just standing there watching, Elsa 
jumps on his back and covers his mouth real quick, and she's like, "Shh, it's Elsa." And she, like, kind of uh, pulls him off to the side. <laughs> she like pulls him off to the side. And she's like, "Hey, trade me that money you got from that guy for my gold coins." And she like holds out like fifty gold coins. Keep in mind that <laughs> I I uh, I will just remind everybody that Android has a hundred win waiting for Elsa. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I will remind the other party members. Elsa has no, no way of knowing that, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's gonna make this even funnier when Android Caesar goes, Oh, here's a hundred win, Elsa. <laughs> but yeah. So what what does Zoltan do now, Zoltan? Now that Elsa's got him pulled to the side? Um, like, I guess I just give her my win and I go financially and ask for Elsa's win? Because Elsa just <laughs> robbed me? Well, hold on now. I don't know if uh, Zoltan would know that Android's got a hundred win for, for Elsa. If you think about it, he wouldn't necessarily know that. Right? Does he know that he has extra win? Does no, he, he doesn't. Right? He doesn't know that at all. All he knows is... It depends on how much he was paying attention when Android made the transaction because he said, okay, if one, however much the transaction was, Android was like, okay, well, he stated anyway that he was going to get everybody a hundred win. Yeah, you know, it just depends on how much you think <laughs> Zoltan would have been paying attention to that interaction. Well, okay, so when that happened, I suppose everybody was standing there, but did Android, when Android oh, no. divvied out the win, was he standing there? See, I'd have to go back and watch the previous episode, but was Android, did Android divvy out the win right then and there, or did this happen after Zoltan had already walked away? Did he divvy it out outside or right then and there? Um. Well, I don't really recall that. And to be honest with you, it really what it, what it what it boils down to did Android make a mention of the fact that he's going he's got enough win for everybody or did he just hand everybody win and say here's 50 for you or here's 100 for you, here's 100 for you. Like really what it boils well, down to I did guess, Android guess... make his intentions known that he was going to Yeah, I guess it depends on how he would have thought about it because as I recall anyway Android was like alright I got enough for everybody here's a hundred for you here's a hundred for you here's a hundred for you and, and he didn't see Elsa around so he just you know didn't bother pulling out the extra hundred he's just, yeah. kind of just sitting on two hundred so that would have just came across as him looking as the gr at the group right then and there and at that time you guys didn't even know Elsa wasn't there because it, because I will point out, it wasn't until the the Kuatoa grabbed Agaragus and said, "She sees you," that you guys all stopped and turned around and looked, except Zoltan, who walked all the way to yeah, the front I of the tent, was gone. like, "What are y'all doing?" You know what I mean? And then you looked and said, "Where is Elsa?" So at that time, when you said, "I got a hundred win for everybody." Zoltan, not realizing Elsa wasn't even with them, would have just assumed that Elsa got her win. That do be true. That do be true. So, regardless of all that, you wouldn't go looking for Android to ask for Elsa's win. At all. Yeah, I just said that like a broke bum. <laughs> well, he gave you a hundred wins, so you would be giving, and you came out with double win from the guy. So if you're only giving her 50, you still will be walking away with, you know, 150 wins still in your pocket. See what I'm saying? Because you would have been walking away with 200 win from the games. If you give her 50, that means that would just leave you with 150. See what I'm saying? So you're not broke. You're still not broke. The question is, is are you curious as to why Elsa wants the win? 
Yes, I am. Is that that will depend on how much I do? Well, don't ask me. Ask Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna have to have a little interaction here. Oh no. What is that? What, what do you need the wind for? It's like, don't you worry about what I need for. You want this damn gold or not? Huh? You want this you, gold that said. I'm giving you or not? Give me your damn wind that you got. Where's going? What he's trying to say is what you got about 40, homie. Man, I give him 50. He's saying he wants them bones and you got them. You got some. <laughs> that Elsa like whittles at one of her daggers between her fingers. She's like, you gonna give it to me or not? Okay, we gotta, we gonna get that. <laughs> turn it to no, Start popping off if Elsa starts doing that. Summon another storm on our head. Elsa, like, so you gonna give it to me or not? Yeah. She takes the bag from him and, and she, she just throws the gold bag, her bag of gold coins at his feet and goes, carry on. And she dips around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Zoltan's gonna turn into a gonna turn into a mouse and start following her. <clears throat> Interesting. So, uh, Zoltan, you turn into a mouse, and after picking up the gold and begin following Elsa, Elsa, you come back up to the group of the now the now uh, debt collectors. I'm gonna. Roll a spot on my boy here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Elsa knows what a rat looks like. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zoltan, you, if you're following her now, you have the option to counteract this with a move silently, if you want to. Elsa stores dead rats in her pocket. She knows what a rat looks like. <laughs> Not for real. As disturbing as that is. Okay, so... <laughs> Elsa, as you're going up to the deck collectors, you, you get this... You hear, like, a little scurrying motion, and you turn around and look, and you see... This little rat just following you, like darting around, like trying to hide or whatever. You know that that can't be right. <laughs> Elsa just like puts her hand in her head or head in her hand for a second. She's like, ah. and she just throws her dagger like right in front of him. <laughs> Zoltan, roll me a. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> She's like, Zoltan, I know that's you. I'm not stupid. And, she, and then she pulls out a rat. She's like, you want to end up like this guy? The squeaks try me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Elsa goes, when we get out of this Jane Zoo, I'll kick your ass. My android said to be good, so go away. <laughs> She picks up her dagger and then just bolts off away from him. <laughs> so he doesn't get the chance to follow her. <laughs> and so also, you make it back to the debt collectors. And uh, they see that you have the, the bag in your hand. And they're like, oh, you got the money. She just kind of divvies that out to him. She's like, here you guys go. They're like, oh, the debt collectors. And Bolo, he's like, well, what's going to be our catchphrase now if we're not the Penny Dreadfuls? We can't say in for a debt, in for a pound. Calm down, calm down. And uh, E 
Bezos just sits him and says, We don't have to have a catchphrase, stupid. We're in a new business now. We're going to collect debts. That's going to be us. We're going to be so heavy in debt, it'll be unreal. I'm glad I could start, start a thieves guild in the city. Ah. <laughs> uh, when you say that, they they look at you for a minute and they're like, Oh, information. Is it information that you want? We got that. What you got? I'm like, well, what you need? Tui over here, the Nizumi, they don't look like much. And they just all kind of look at him for a minute. He just kind of shrugs. They're like, but the Nizumi, they're second to none at getting secrets. is like, oh really? How so? Tui says, <clears throat> if you got a secret and you're trying to keep it, I can get into it. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy. We got a whole network of children all, all throughout this place. Like the Jingzu is the one time a year that we all get to come together and, and talk about our stuff. Most of the time, it's all just like, messages and carrier pigeons and things shoot we know stuff that's going on amongst the tribes and the different shogunates that not even they know about hmm. so can you guys find out about us some kind of assassination contract like <laughs> yeah <laughs> they, the uh two he kind of gulps and he goes uh, yeah, I mean, is it is it hot in here suddenly, you guys? Or like, <clears throat> who, who during the Jing Zoo, there's an assassination? Elsa looks at him and goes, "Don't you wimp out on me now?" Kiko goes, "No, that's that's not good though. If somebody gets killed what? during the Jing Zoo, my people are gonna go crazy." This is like. Well, yeah, that's why I need to find it out so I can stop it. I'm like, all right. She goes, so, and she tells them about the fucking group that was at the tavern. She's like, these guys had the contract. Now they don't have it. Somebody else got it now. So I need to find out who's got the new contract and who's gone. So that way we can stop it. Did you who the so the did you get a name of the assassin? No, I don't know nothing. Like I said, this group of people said that their contract they lost the contract to somebody else. I don't know who that is. Shin pipes in and goes, "Who would have the balls to come up in here with every intention of committing a <laughs> up in here?" And he's like, looks at him. She's like, "You act like I would know. I don't live here. They're like, you don't know anything about them. Like, anything like what they look like or anything? Nothing. I know what the group that I saw that had the contract and lost it. Other than that, I don't know nothing. What did they look I thought like? You guys were the secret finders. Well, we are. We are. Yeah, yeah. Just, just be all right if we, if we knew who." You know, w what we were looking for. Get out of a start somewhere. She's like, well, there was the big dude with the beard and mustache and some, like, big hoops on his ears. And then there was some lady, like, young human lady with some, like, light hair. I think her name is Jen something. When you say... And then, there Keep was going. some leader dude named Zinguchi. Uh, what a straw hat and a fancy sword. The second you say Zinguchi or Zinguchi and Jin, they all like freeze. <clears throat> and Shin goes, <clears throat> the, the the demon sword, Zinguchi. Uh, sure. And you just hear, like, it, they just all get quiet for, like, a long time, and then out of nowhere, Bolo just kind of farts. He's like, 
Oh, oh. Also looks at him. It's like, control yourself, please. That's disgusting. <laughs> Tui goes, this could, this is bad. If Zaguchi's here, that's, that's the cabal, the Zaguchi cabal. There was three of them, plus him. The cabal. The cabal here in town. Go lay down. You said they lost the contract, though. Yeah. They lost his contract to somebody else. Two, he says, all right, I'm on it. Okay. Shin's like, well, at least we don't have to deal with Zaguchi. Are they leaving town now, or what? Did you watch them leave town? No, they spotted me, and I took off. But they said they had a new contract, so... I don't know what that one's about. When you say that, uh... Uh... Aiko looks at, uh... Uh, Shiza, and she's to the fox... To the fox girl, and I think I've changed her name, like, five times now. Yeah, probably. She says, that's your job. Find out what the new contract is. She says, right. And then she scurries off. It's about this time that the sun is starting to, like, come up. Like, you've been out all night. You've heard Dragula and Thriller get, like, Android play both Dragula and Thriller play. <laughs> this entire time. Uh, Elsa's like, well, guys, good luck on my new name, and if you need to find me, I'll be with that guy that's up there playing the music. They say, well, <clears throat> they look, and they're like, before you go, though, before you go, uh, Aiko says, before you go, I mean, we've got to initiate you, right? She's she's in the group, right? <clears throat> she goes, yeah, I can't imagine why she wouldn't be. She says, <clears throat> she says, uh, welcome to the newly formed debt collectors. And she like, uh, puts her hand in, into a circle and Shin puts his hand in and Bolo puts his hand in and, uh, they motion for you to put your hand in. And come and on. Someone like covers her hand over the top. She doesn't actually want to touch them. And they're like, well, and they're like, okay, well, what are we saying now, though? Well, it says, see, this is what I'm talking about. Should have, we should have come up with a new catchphrase. And like, oh, well, screw it. We'll come up with one later. For now, let's just say it. They're like, repeat after us. In for a penny, in for a pound. Ready? On three. Oh, and then yeah. they, they say it, and you, I guess you kind of mumble the yeah. words or <laughs> yeah she's like eh, okay whatever no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah and they just kind of throw their hands up and they're like yeah and uh Aiko says okay well she says if you if you need me uh look look for my uh my dad he's he's a pretty he's pretty well known I guess um He's he's the gate watcher in our village. His name is Lao D. Okay? Lao D. She says, go find him if anything happens. He we we were uh our uh our shaman Nani Nani sent him here anyways. Uh she she had some important mess information for him, so he's here on official business anyway. So he'll he'll be you know he'll already be ready to handle anything. He's a good guy. Okay, you can trust him. You can trust us, and we'll get that information for you and your group. Okay. Yeah, you give me that information, and I'll get you all some more win. So, and they're like, okay, all right, yeah. They're like, all right. Debt collectors, scatter! And they all just like scatter in opposite directions. Just real dramatic. Also just puts her head in her hand again. She's like, fucking kids. <laughs> and then she goes to find Andrew. 
It's about this time that everybody's like marching. You see that the stage is empty now and everybody's marching towards the, uh, at this point, uh, at this point to the, the, uh, the concert has been over and a lot of people have already left and the sun <clears throat> morning is coming, but it isn't quite here yet. And you realize that Android and you quill and all of them are gone and probably have been for a while because it looks like the players are now picking up and, and, uh, you know, cleaning up their area and whatever. Uh, <clears throat> so you begin making your way up with the crowd up to the it seems like everybody now is funneling up to the palace and the sun is is rising and uh you see eventually as you push through you see android is standing there talking with a, a dragoon man who who you recognize you met him um you actually met him when you were in the small village, he uh, he was the one that was extremely kind to you, like you know, sat there and just talked with yeah. you. Didn't wasn't condescending that you were that you were small. He just you know what I'm saying. And he uh, he's standing there talking with Android, and he uh, steps away, and it looks like him and Android are having a pretty serious conversation. And by this time, uh. Agaragus, Zoltan, and Uquil are all standing with Android as well as you approach them. And that's just gonna make sure she uh, has changed clothes before all this happens. Okay. Um, and then she's gonna just be like have her dress wadded up and stuck in her shirt or something. <laughs> you just got it like a sash around your waist. <laughs> Or something, yeah. <laughs> like, Very oriental looking. Yeah. Um, and the clothes do. They do. They look real Eastern. They look okay. real. <laughs> yeah. As you uh, come walking up to them, yeah. And uh, as Elsa comes walking up, Android, you see Elsa come walking up, no longer wearing the dress. It's now like a sash around her waist, and she's just dressed in the in the clothing of this of these lands you know yeah, elsa gets to him and she she takes the dress and she's like uh could you give this back to sebastian for me this is oh sure no problem and he takes it and puts it in his bag of holding he says you may have to remind me he says while we're at it he reaches into his bag and pulls out a hundred win and gives it to her <laughs> Like ah, thank you. <laughs> she looks at old and just gives him a side eye. I do, I just like every moment. <laughs> I think I might start a riot. <laughs> Let's start a riot. All right. At this point, we're gonna take a, a small break. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna get something to drink. Uh. Take my dog out to the bathroom, give him some food. You know, uh, he's kind of whining at me. So, uh, well, I'll be back in a few minutes. But everybody, if you got to go to the bathroom or get something to drink or something, go for it. Okay. Ready? Bring the pain. Time to bring the pain. All right. So we're back from break. <clears throat> um. Yeah, so, here we are at the official start of the Honored Jingzu competition, the tournament, as it were. Um, <clears throat> all of you have been reunited now. You are all standing there. As you, Quill, you stand there. Kind of unsure as to what you're supposed to do now. You know that you're in the tournament, but you don't really know per se, like, like, what the crap, right? Like, okay, so I'm in this tournament, but, like, do, are you supposed to stand somewhere in particular? Like, what, what are you supposed to do? So you're just kind of standing there right now, just kind of like, standing there with his dick in his hand. <laughs> yeah. Like, alrighty then. And, um, 
eventually Mazaru appears. Okay, so apparently uh, my cat did something and my wife is like trying to shoo her away. <laughs> so if you guys can hear that, <laughs> that's what that is. But eventually you all see Mazaru, who you are familiar with, the dragoon shaman woman. She is that blue crystalline color with her wings and whatnot. She appears before the crowd. When the crowd when she appears before the crowd, you guys hear double gongs just and everybody falls silent. As she comes stepping out, she says Welcome to the Honored Jing Zoo. To all the newcomers, welcome. To all the ones that are veterans, we welcome. To our foreign friends, we welcome. And she doesn't, like, single you guys out in particular, but you watch as her gaze falls upon you for a moment. She says... Every 30 years, we host the Jing Zoo. It is the one time in all the lands that we can all come together. Every shogunate, every tribe, every group, we can come together and know peace. For three days, we will know peace. And for three days, no blood shall be shed. So is the way of the Jing Zhu. She says, now, <clears throat> let us begin to show the honored chosen. She says, uh, and you guys watch as one man, uh, one of the honored chosen steps forward. You quill, you recognize this thing right away. He is not he is a foreigner just like you, just like the rest of you. Because he is a werewolf. He is large. I mean, even by werewolf standards, you don't think you've ever seen a werewolf this freaking large before. Uh he's got these big gnarly claws. And uh <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. He's just—he looks like a werewolf. <laughs> and she announces him. She says, "The Sao Zhu Shogunate, its honor chosen this year, shall be Bloodseeker Hurong." And he steps forward. And everybody just kind of murmurs, Whoa. you know, they're they're like, oh, he didn't he didn't enter this year. He sent he sent his uh, his uh, his mercenary. You know, you can hear people kind of murmuring about it. She says next, <clears throat> we have the next honor chosen, and a uh, dog man steps forward and she says the dodgy mercenary group has chosen Kobe Yama she says next we have a, uh, <clears throat> you watch as a one of those jade mercenaries that you guys saw before. He steps forward only. This one looks different. He looks... Uh, his armor isn't like the others. He looks like he's more... Uh, a fit, I don't want to say official, but he looks more important. If that... if I guess if that makes... If that's a better description, I guess, if you will. And she says, the Jade Mercenary Group chooses Lord Dai Fu as their honored chosen. And this carries on pretty much 
the uh, the rest of the the rest of the way. Um, the oh, let me see if I can get names here. So the uh. Yeah, the Peng Zhong, the basically the bearmen, or pandas, if you will, because that's really just what they are. They they have an honor chosen. The oxmen, the one who are who are called the Yakuzen, have a chosen. The Bunzai, the bunny folk, have a chosen. <laughs> the goat folk, the Bixian, have a chosen. The Ketsune, the fox folk, have a chosen. The Nezumi, the rat folk have a chosen, and the how, the basically the monkey men, the humanoid monkey men have a chosen as well. And then you watch as a woman who is uh who is with what looks like a a a clergy of some sort, but they look more Asian. They're they're a group of monks, basically. And this woman steps out amongst and you haven't seen anybody who looks like a monk until now. And she steps out of their midst, and they say, The Golden Lotus Monastery has chosen their honored Master Zhang Ye. And this woman uh, steps out from their midst. Finally, one of the last chosen which <clears throat> now this this surprises you all because a group of of knights come marching up and they are knights they are not oriental in style whatsoever they look like they come straight from white sword or someplace because you know in your guys's homeland Knights are a are commonplace. Here you've noticed there aren't any knights. This guy is and he's not <clears throat> he's not uh indigenous to Peng Shun. He looks like he would come from your homeland or maybe across the seas in Brokine even. He's got a beard and long hair and he wears armor that is decorative of that of a wolf. And uh Maozaru, she says, <clears throat> The Knights of the Far Moon have chosen their honored one, Lord Ostlin Wolfbow. And so eventually every single one of the, uh, the honored chosen are selected. And then she says, when when it seems like she's done, she says, and now, for the first time in any Jing Zhu, the Dragoon has selected an honored chosen. And she motions to the crowd because all of a sudden people begin to murmur. They're like, what? what is this? You know, you even see some Dragoon who are murmuring confused, like as if they didn't even know. <clears throat> She points to you in your direction, you quill. When she does, people kind of part, and they're all looking at you as you're standing there. And she says, I present the Dragoon's Honor Chosen. You quill. I go with the I am, uh, I am him shogun. It's on. The what? I am him shogun. Yeah, the Dragoon shogun. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I am here. Of the I am him! Show <laughs> You know how they do those all the, like, NFL, when they're introducing the players, you know, they let them do it. I can't remember who it is, because I, he's from I am, or he's a I am him. I think it's Odell Beckham. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I, I, he's, like, he's, 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 he's not like a school or nothing. He's, you know, like, um, one of them, I think it's like Terrell Sucks is I'm from Ball, Ball So Hard University or whatever. Mm -hmm. I love those things when they do that. That's funny. That's, that's you, Quill. <laughs> I am him. I am him. So you quote you uh you go marching through the crowd and take your place amongst the other honored chosen. And they're all looking at you. 
quite uh, quizzically, if you will. Kind of, you know, at first they were looking at... Yeah, and they were just kind of looking at you kind of like, hmm. Mm. Strange. Like, not even Lord Wolfbow, even though you can tell that he is a... Uh, even though you can tell he is a foreigner too, none of them seemed even surprised by him as well. You know? <laughs> yes, exactly. Just like that, Cassie. Um... <laughs> uh, but, uh... <clears throat> what are those looking ass? But you... What are those? You, however... They, they're kind of, everybody's kind of looking. She says, these are the honored chosen. We shall begin the first half of strength. And we will whittle it down to the finals. She says, honored chosen. Be prepared. <clears throat> for each of you bring something different to the table. Do not take your opponent lightly. Do not think yourself better. Take heed lest you fall. Respect one another, for that is what the honored Jingzu is. This is a competition of honor and respect. Says the competition will begin in the half of the hour. Until then, enjoy the festival. And when she does that, fireworks go off in the air again. <laughs> but because it's daytime, they don't really sparkle as much as they just crash into the sky. <laughs> and the crowd begins to, you know, disperse. <clears throat> Uh, you quill. The female monk looks at you, Master uh, Zaye. She looks at you and she says, "You must come with us. I know that you don't know where what you're supposed to be doing because you are not of our lands. And frankly, I'm somewhat insulted by your presence here." But because I am a person of honor, I will show you where to go with where to go. She says, <clears throat> yes. And kinda bows and uh motions for you as all of the honored chosen uh <clears throat> begin to march into what looks like a set of barracks. It's like a gate, a gated area, <clears throat> but you can see that it's marching down underground. She says, follow us to the waiting room. She takes you down there. And you can see that this is basically a sleeping area. And uh, a training room. It's an area to sleep, train, eat, all of it. <clears throat> and <clears throat> she just kind of walks off. She just leaves you there now that she's taking you there. And you see uh, Lord Wolfbow kind of eyeing you. He says, <clears throat> What part of the continent of Vorkamina are you from, boy? I guess he tells you. He says, ah, yes. And this do I. He says, I've been there. He says, I was a... Uh, my order did a few jobs there. But as you know, that is uh, a treacherous land. Usually. He says, yes, we are an order of... Honor, <laughs> which sounds funny, in considering the competition we're in. Says I, <clears throat> says I didn't feel right. It never felt like I was fighting on the right side, if you know what I mean. 
me guess I can see that. It says, what brings you to uh, the Dragoon Shogunate? Oh! A series of fortune events. I see. Does the... Does your, uh... Damn fear lords know in Vorkamina or in Nandis Dulai where... That you're here? Or are you a deserter? I say deserter, but yeah. I move of my own volition. As I see, earned your freedom. You must Something be, like that. you must be wealthy in Andis Dulai then to be able to just do that, moving about, of your own free volition. Uh, came at a price, I guess you could say. So, so, yes. As well, me and mine, <clears throat> we originally come from Brokine, but. We're one of those wandering orders, if you will. We finally settled here in... in the Six Demon Shogunate. Trying to free its people. <laughs> Says, ah, that's a story for a different time, though. Probably shouldn't be being too friendly with one another. Who knows, we might end up having to beat the tar out of each other, eventually. your first Jing Zhu? Uh, yes. Well, <clears throat> these are the, this is the honored quarters. It doesn't look like much, but here we can rest, we can train if you want, and even get some food. <clears throat> At times we're even allowed to go out to the festival and enjoy it, but I, I highly caution partaking too much in its fervor. Or you might not be ready for your next opponent. If you understand my meaning. No, it makes sense. Go lay down. I don't necessarily want to go have too much fun and be useless when it comes down for you. Says yes. Says ass. Well, <clears throat> you do strike me as a military man. So I'm sure you understand. More than I would like to, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he kind of chuckles at that. He's like, <laughs> yeah. So it's just, the important thing to know is that this competition is all about honor. Says so this first round is the test of strength. We're going to be pitted up against one another, one by one, knocking each other out. It's all hand-to-hand -hand combat. No weapons, no magic. No, no abilities, no nothing. Just pure, you know, pure inner strength. He goes, uh, <clears throat> he points over at the, at the monk woman, Zhang Yang. He goes, she's probably actually one of the most dangerous opponents, and I feel sorry for whoever gets her first round, since she comes from the Golden Lotus Monastery, and <laughs> they basically do hand-to-hand -hand combat on a regular basis. So she's going to have the advantage. She doesn't look big, but she's going to be tough. Keep that in mind if you get her first round. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of... And not... He doesn't say it in any like an insulting way. He's like, yeah, that's kind of evident from her demeanor. That's a, indeed, <clears throat> indeed. Says the other one is uh, Lord Dai Fu, and he points to the Jade Mercenary. He goes, that's the leader of the Jade Mercenaries. He's also going to be tough. So, watch out for him if you get him first round. He's. <clears throat> He's more of a weapons specialist, if you will, but <clears throat> you don't become the leader of the Jade Mercenary and not know how to kill with your bare hands. Calm down. Fortunately, we're not allowed to kill anybody because that's dishonorable, but he may. But there's nothing that says they can't leave you a cripple. <clears throat> Go 
do. And he he may try to do that. So, <clears throat> yeah, train or do whatever it is you need to do, but make peace with it because apparently the dragoon are are uh, betting on you this year. Yeah, yeah, it would seem that way. Because if you don't mind me asking, <clears throat> the dragoon, as far as I know, have never have never entered. The Jingzu. They've always hosted it, but they've never entered it. What is it about a foreigner that has them wanting to uh, to bet so heavily on on them? The reasons that. I'm still not sure of 100%. Question mark. I think they had a really strong hunch, I guess. He just kind of gives you a half smile. He says, very well. Keep your secrets, then. He just kind of chuckles. He's like, okay, it's kind of a secret to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I know, but I don't know, you know? He kind of shifts and his, his armor, you know, kind of clanks a little bit. He says, oh. Says, well, <clears throat> I, uh, I hope that you and I make it to the final round and we get to actually do the race against one another. It'd be... That'd be something, wouldn't it? Two foreigners actually winning the Jin one of them winning the Jing Zhu. That would just blow their xenophobic mind. Yeah, they would probably be feeling some type of way about that. As well. <clears throat> regardless, the Dragoon are wanting a foreigner to win this year, so that says something. They've got something planned. probably going to start a war when the Jing Zhu is over. Then you're going to be the reason. I'll be interested in seeing how that plays itself out. You cool kind of chuckles. He's like, won't be the first time. Probably won't be the last. <laughs> With that, he just kind of, well, and he stands up and goes, I'm going to go get catch myself something to eat. We'll, uh, We'll see you around. That he he goes sauntering off. <clears throat> Outside, Android, Agargus, Zoltan, and um, Elsa, you guys are, you know, now that the crowd is broken up and everything, and you've watched as uh, Yukwil has marched off to this area out of your sight. What are you all doing now? What is your plans? That's a good question. So there's no like real competition right now. Yukul's just getting like a pre briefing sort Bluffed. of thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Like you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess. I guess Android is going to make an effort to find a place to wait for you, Will. <laughs> you know. Okay. So. I don't. Was there a way we could go before the fight happened? There is. Well, <clears throat> now. Again, the Jingzu is still in, in full swing. The festival, you guys can still hear their music and everything. Uh, <clears throat> it's not like they hid him away. You can see the barracks area, the gate into the barracks from where you're standing. So I'm hiding. Um, There is a, you know... <laughs> so you know... You, you know <laughs> I'm in danger. Oh, I'm in danger. No, I'm in the closet. <laughs> no, I'm in the closet too. 
<laughs> but uh but you can you can see where he's at there's just guards kind of standing outside of it you know kind of guarding it watching over it you know i just had yeah. the weirdest case of deja vu um nice. but yeah like you can see where he's at you you just don't really see him now uh to answer zoltan's question um I suppose if you wanted to get in to talk to him, you know, you can always tra uh, transform into creatures. Yeah. Oh, yes, Molly walks. <laughs> you turn into a snake and they're just like, Snoop! And they chop your head up. Nice. Who the does? No, Zoltan might actually just transform into a fish and flop around. <laughs> I have magic carpet. Goes flopping through the gate. Just. I didn't know they had magic carpet around here. What the fuck? Did you see? Uh, did you see that? Did you see that fish? Yeah, I saw that fish. Yeah. Hmm. Weird. You think it's a Gyarados? No. No, I think it's just a bass. That's <laughs> 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 oh, okay. so crappy. Here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Monty Python. If, uh, if, if, uh... Do what? I'm sorry. Turn it into a golden, uh, magic card. Make him question reality. Like, catch it! <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Monty Python skit. It, just stand here and watch. <laughs> if a, uh, if a, uh, if a, uh, if if a, uh, he goes to leave, they go to follow him. There. He's like, "What are you doing? You said that if you leave, we go, we go and tell you." He goes, "What? No. The prince. Oh, the prince. Right. He shouldn't go anywhere. That's who I'm talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about him." I thought it was right daft asking a guard to walk guard a guard. <laughs> oh man. I, I, yes, there is that. Yeah, this I, I love it so much. It's one of the best scenes in the whole day movie. <laughs> none of that, none of that. Anyways, <clears throat> um So uh <clears throat> Yeah. Were you were you gonna turn into something, Zoltan? Or yeah, you guys know where he's at. What about you, Agaragus? What are you doing? Now, Agaragus, you actually you had a you had an interesting um you had an interesting last session. A lot got told to you. And so like. I really don't know where Agaragus is at right now, if that makes any sense. Like, I mean, like, I can't see you. You are so small. And you're yeah, out of vision. <laughs> no, <but laughs> I just really don't know where you're at right now. Like, is any of this, like, is any of the Jingzu even setting in for them? Like, what are they doing right now? Yeah. <laughs> eating, <laughs> eating your own arm. Guys, you gotta try this. <laughs> You're crazy, man. That's why I like you. Yeah, but what is Agaragus doing at the uh, moment? I kind of... I don't know. Um, okay, so were we going back to, like... Are we staying anywhere for, like, the time? Or are we still... You guys do actually have rooms at the palace. <clears throat> Each of you were given a room when you first got there, which I know that was several sessions ago. That was we like five more than a man. Ago. Yeah, which was like more than a month ago when that session took so, place. But you, instead of one eternity later, it's one eternity, it's one eternity earlier. Yeah, one moon cycle. Um, but you, uh, yeah, you guys actually have. Uh, rooms at the palace. Uh, God, no one. 
that was when um the you guys met the shogun and he was not happy with your presence here and you guys have yet to see him since for that matter but yeah you do have rooms here at the at the palace in of itself okay hmm. <clears throat> I guess, I think, uh, he's just gonna go back to his room and, like, meditate for now. Alright. <clears throat> so, uh, Garagus leaves you guys and heads to the- uh, begins, uh, going to their- to the palace to go into their room. Um, <clears throat> when you get there, Garagus, again, the- the rooms are quite different here. It just looks like they're just boxes made out of stick and paper. <laughs> you know, the walls and everything with the doors, instead of being like open and closed, they slide off to the side as you enter. And as you shut it, you uh, you basically do what I like to call taking root, where you're just kind of planting yourself and it's like a form of resting. It's almost like what elves do when they sleep. They more or less meditate more than they sleep, and that's kind of what you're doing. It's almost like you're just putting yourself in like an autopilot mode <clears throat> with your thoughts. As so you okay. just kind of, hmm. and as you do that, um, you begin going over uh, the things that have been told to you. I'm assuming that's what you're meditating on, you know? Yeah. Without going too deep into the details of it, you begin to meditate on the things that are told, have been told to you. And you begin to wonder if your patron, as it were, if they are as kind as you were led to believe your whole life. Something do with this what you will but there is a sinister note that is like kind of like scratching at you you know you can choose to ignore it and continue to believe how you've always believed and the choice is completely yours or you can follow this thread and see what it unravels but there is a sort of nagging sensation now and you begin to wonder however deeply you desire why is this so important you know what is the urgency behind this because when it was first when you were first given the task it seemed like just that, a task. No different than the gathering and, uh, you know, you, your people are gatherers, you know, you're cultivators of nature, right? Mm -hmm. It felt more like that when it was first given to you, this task, this mission of yours. But now, <clears throat> it seems like there's more of a, uh, an urgency to it. And, dare I say, it was almost threatening. As if they were threatening you, like, you had better do this. <laughs> or if not. And so now you're wondering, just how kind is this, is this person? You know, but you, you do with that what you will. Think that through. Uh, Easy. You're allowed to think that through however you want to develop a Garrigus. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Elsa, what are you doing? Uh, Elsa is just going to fill Android head on what she was doing. So, Android, Elsa begins to talk to you and tell you about everything that happened to her when she when she got separated from you. And she mentions this assassination contract to you, which naturally would spark something in your mind because 
you were talking to Lao D about the knowledge of exactly the, the knowledge because you know for a fact that this that there's an assassination plot being concocted by somebody <clears throat> against Mazaru. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Did Android die? He no, sorry. Oh. I guess I didn't hit my push to talk button. Oh. <laughs> He's so fucking dead! <laughs> oh, he died! My baby! He is dead! My baby. Oh. <laughs> now leave me! But yeah, they, uh, yeah, so Elsa fills you in on that, so, uh, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Android sits and stews on what he's going to do. Um, oh, but you, you, you do okay, tell him... You do tell him about the, the demon sword, Saguchi, that you learned about him, right? Or at least... You, they didn't really tell you much about that, though. They just told you, you know, they just acted like... They called him the demon sword, and that... So now you know... Android, I guess, to fill in the blanks there, that there was a guy who apparently even the kids know about named Demon Sword Zaguchi, who they called the Demon Sword, who had the contract, but lost it to somebody else. So, yeah, the... I'm writing that down. Demon Sword Zaguchi had the contract, but lost it to someone else. Mm hmm And that, apparently he's a dangerous character. And Elsa started the Thieves oh, Guild. And Elsa started the Thieves Guild, yes. Android, <laughs> she tells him all this and goes, Oh, so that's what you've been doing. So a normal day for you. Yeah, pretty much. She's like, it is what it is. Do you intend to ma continue managing the Steve's Guild? No. Look, okay. there's way too much work. I didn't think so. I was just curious. I just want the information the little shits can give me. Android tussles her hair and pulls her stick out of her bag and gives it to her. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, and uh, by the way, there's something wrong with the. Uh, uh, Binks here. He seems to be in uh, goop form. When you look, yeah. sorry, go, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, like, she kind of like looks behind her. And she's like, uh, I don't know. I might need you to check my shadow because I don't think he's working right. <laughs> yeah, her shadow just looks like a pool. Yeah, it, it just looks like a pool. Like, it's still a shadow, right? It's not tangible. You can't grab it, but it just looks like a... It just looks like an ink blot. Hold on, I gotta... I gotta mute this cat real quick. Yeah. Uh, it just looks like a, uh... Um... An ink blot in shadow form on the ground. Like, y you realize as you look at it that Elsa's not casting a shadow anymore. It looks like when she walks around, she's being trailed by a... Uh... A roar... Uh, yeah, a roar shack, as it were. You know what I mean? Like, every once in a while, it shifts and changes forms as if it's trying to uh, become something. Android checks his shadow. <laughs> Roll. So, as you peer into your own shadow, you get closer because you're like, what is that? And a hand, a demonic hand, reaches out and grabs you by the throat. And squeezes tight. And then you blink in it. There's nothing there. Yeah. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you're like, what the? Like, it causes you to, like, jump back kind of bewildered. 
Kendrick kind of gasps. He's just like, <gasps> oh, <laughs> you're like, nah, -uh, wrong. The <laughs> I knew you weren't gonna believe me, and I'm like, that's what's gonna be the payoff on that one. <laughs> no. You're like, nah, -uh, no, -uh. no. But yeah, you completely like hallucinate this. It's just an hallucination. You think. And you kind of, yeah. Android's like, well, putting that one in the vault. <laughs> <laughs> he just turns back to Elsa. <laughs> She's like, um, I don't rightly know what to do about that. Can you still speak to him? But I don't know. I'm gonna try since he went to blob one. And uh. I gave him a rat to eat. He liked it. Y'all are just a bunch of haters. Um, <laughs> and then he threw up and turned into that. <laughs> Waving at the non believers. You're so goofy. Um. Android kind of sits and ponders on this for a minute and he's like, well. Oh. I don't know how much help this will be to you, but I can remember once upon a time when I couldn't summon Solar to my side. And when I did eventually try it and it worked, he was suddenly able to turn into his giant eagle form. And he told me that's kind of where he had been. So maybe this is kind of his the form of that kind of shrugs he's like I hope optimistically interesting she just kind of reaches down and pats the ground it's like it's okay when you talk to it it answers back to you but it's like gibberish it's like no, 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 like backwards pass. This is like I, I don't know what to do. Maybe. <laughs> you can uh, mm. give it a little bit of time, and if it doesn't, if the condition doesn't improve, we can uh, find somebody to take a look at it. Kind of scratches his head. This is just kind of outside of my area of expertise. That makes two of us then. What, uh. What even is he? He kind of like narrows his eyes when, you know, he thinks about it. He said Ek made some sort of contract, is that right? <clears throat> I think Elsa, or he told Elsa about it, but I don't remember what it was. Um, Elsa, you can roll an intelligence. An intelligence check to see if you remember. Or, or wisdom, whichever one of the two you're better at. To see if you can actually remember what Ek all told you about that. She was also in the middle of her, but... I'm holding, you know, trying to figure out that shit out, so nice. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Not terrible. No, that's pretty good. Um <clears throat> from what you can recall about it was Ek had always said that he manifested it. That like he, oh yeah, that's right. That's he right. he managed to like, like, well, maybe I can manifest and be mine, and then mm -hmm. maybe join her, her, and then join her shadow. And then according maybe. to Biggs, yeah, according to Biggs, it was like he is Ek, but he's not Ek. You know, that's the way it works. Which. Biggs also said, and it's like just earlier, he said, and if that doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't make sense to me either. So I don't know what else to do about it. Yeah, and then 
Also tell the android, yeah, we think from our conversation, little conversation here, we think he's becoming me? Shimmer? She's like, and she goes, he said something about I have a kind of door or something that I don't know is closed or something in my brain. I don't know. Big confusion. Yeah. When she says that, Android gives her like kind of a serious look, and he's like, "Be careful playing with that." Stay young. <laughs> Don't go Stay anywhere. Stay here. <laughs> Stay away <laughs> from oh, the puberty yeah. door. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know what's behind that door? And once you open it, it's uh, you know, he just kind of knocks on his head. <laughs> he's like. So just be careful doing that. But, uh, yeah, maybe that's just what that is. Maybe he'll pop out. He'll probably be a little different, I would imagine. <clears throat> kind of rubs the back of his neck. <laughs> you know, doesn't really know what to tell her. It's like, uh... Like, I really don't know what to make of that manifesting business, but if nothing else, we can, uh try and contact Sebastian somehow, have him start looking into it, if his condition doesn't improve. Oh, Alright, I just wanted you to know, because you know more about this stuff than I do. While this is happening, is, uh, Zoltan, go ahead and roll me a spot check. You've been kind of pondering this door that you quill went behind for like a hot minute now go ahead and just roll me a, a spot go lay down a little spotty spot a little spot on Spotankulous. Spotacular. <laughs> Spotterific. Tentacular. Spectacular. <clears throat> so you're. They're over there just kind of talking, and you're just kind of pondering this door, like, how would I get through that door if I need to get through that door? Like, you know, and you happen to catch in your peripheral vision a, uh, per per view, peripheral view. You catch in your peripheral view. Yeah. <laughs> Language. <laughs> um. You catch in your yeah, it's so hard. It is like the hardest language to learn, okay? Um You catch in your purview. Yeah. She talk huh? Um No, seriously, like that's the, like I was listening to somebody and I was like, man, the inflection of that is crazy. Um but the uh you catch in your purview uh somebody garbed up like they're they're garbed up and head to toe in black and they're kind of hiding in the shadows and they're watching because now that the crowds have kind of dissipated uh you guys are more out in the open just kind of standing around and you see this person garbed in black kind of hiding off in the bushes a little bit just watching you and your group and the second you see them they kind of slither back into the bushes, trying to like escape your your notice. Calm down, calm down. Do I have him on mute? I forgot if I had him on mute or not. Oh, my I, bad. I was muted this whole time and I was stuck. Wow. Uh -oh. Fucking guys. Oh, no, uh, nice. yeah. I was, uh, I was saying, I'm gonna the whole entire team I'll be like, hey, uh, someone just matted in black hiding and just tried to avoid me spotting you. When, when Android, uh, peels his half elven eyes. <laughs> 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 no, I'm kidding. 
Uh, when he says that too, Elsa, you remember also that one of the things that you remember him them talking about was the fact that somebody is aware of your group, that they know who you are. They don't know much about you, but they are aware of your group. Uh, when when you were spying on them in the alleyway, they were talking specifically about you and your uh, about the group in the first place. And that's what caught your attention. Mm. Yeah. You should put land your bed to it. So, Zoltan told Android and Elsa about that and Agaricus, I guess. Oh no, Agaricus wasn't there. No. So, Android and Elsa? Well, yeah, he told Android and Elsa, and then Elsa just now was like, oh yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna take a look. What are you, uh, t how are you taking a look? Be a little bit more specific? Uh, okay. I'm gonna try and, now that he's told me, I guess I'm gonna try and not be, like, obvious about it, you know? Discreetly try and look over without a bit, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, just kind of, like, sweep. Sure, go ahead and roll me a spot check. <clears throat> Okay, so you kind of you kind of glance around, but <clears throat> because uh, Zoltan did just like <clears throat> see it, <clears throat> because Zoltan noticed them, and they noticed Zoltan noticing them, and then you know whoever's watching you watched Zoltan clearly watched Zoltan turn around and say something to you, and then you just kind of nonchalantly, <sighs> kind of you know what I mean. It's, yeah. it's almost like that moment in a diner when you're like, somebody says something and they're like, can you believe that? And you go to look and they're like, don't look. And so you try to kind of, but you're obviously looking, you know what I mean? Right. It, it kind of happens that way. And you do see them, right. but they see you see them and they begin to bolt. They just <laughs> from the bushes oh, and yeah. just begin to run. Oh, fuck. Elsa, get them. Hey, Hey, it's like, uh, what do you want me to do? You want me to... Don't, don't kill him. Just well, kill him. Like, well, obviously don't You're kill just him. faster than me. I'm just, I'm going to follow behind you. Attack him. Get him. Elsa's like, all right, whatever. She fucking picks after him. <laughs> uh, does Elsa have oh, run yeah. as a feat? Yeah, she's got stupid movement. Okay, so... Elsa, you catch up to him. If you didn't have that feat, this was going to become a bit more of a parkour session. But since you do have run as a feat, I will just say you clean that distance on him really quick. <clears throat> he, he, you chase him down into the city, and it looks like he's about to, like, parkour up a wall. And you jump on him just minutes before he can, like, think WWE oh, cage. Just back. <laughs> yeah, just think WWE cage match. Like, you catch him and just freaking bring him back down off the wall just <clears throat> to the ground, and he wrestles with you for a minute, and you headbutt him, and he just, boom, hits the ground, and you pin him there. As Android and Zoltan come running up. Um. Yeah, it it removes his mask, and you see that he's one of the rat folk, the Nizumi. And he's just like, <laughs> he's looking mighty pissed. Android kind of squats down and he gets this kind of the, like, <clears throat> he cracks this little grin, you know, as he narrows his eyes and he says, hello. He says, so there are two ways that this can go. You can tell me what you know, or I can let this little girl eat you. She is very fond of rat. He so pulls a dead rat out of her. her. He looks up at you with, like, hatred in his eyes, and he says, Rat? You call me rat? He also it smacks it. him with the dead rat. <laughs> yeah, as he goes to say anymore, <laughs> he gets slapped across. He's like, how big of a... <laughs> Android kind of spits at the ground. He says, um, Don't give me that. 
He says, you've been set standing there spying on us. Oh, you know what you're doing. He says, tell me what you know. Obviously, we can't kill you now, but we can hold you until we can. You, uh... Even I am not so foolish as to kill you during the honorable June 2. Elsa reaches over and pulls a rope out of the bag of holding. He says, <clears throat> he goes, I'll tell you something. He goes, if whatever it is, you, you foreigners think you know, you have no idea. You got yourselves in a world of trouble and you don't even know. We're going to get you. We're going to get you. And trust me, whatever it is you think you could do to me, he can do so much worse. And when he says that, you watch as he breaks one of his teeth. Like, he takes his tongue and snaps it, and you realize it's a false tooth. And you watch as a liquid pours out of his false tooth down his throat, and then in a matter of seconds, he begins to, like, foam at the mouth and just... Huh. Well, that was a suicide. Was I like, didn't oh. do it. That was dumb. Yeah. And now, so as you sit on him, all of a sudden you feel Andrew his like. picks him up and puts him in the back holding. <laughs> well, that's what I was going to say. Like, as Elsa's sitting on him, right? You feel like. You feel his body shift for a minute. And then it becomes real malleable, <clears throat> almost squishy. And then you hear a. And you watch. Like, instinctively, you stand up and you watch as his body just begins to eat itself and dissolve into the ground, erasing any trace of it. Oh. Also looks at Andrew and he goes, well, that solves that problem. Yeah. Yeah, is his armor and shit still left behind? Like, his... No, everything ate uh, away. Ah, oh, shit. I was gonna check him. Hmm. That sucks. <clears throat> Well, I have to keep that in mind. False tooth. Pretty lame. Calm down. Pretty boring. The great kind of scratches his chin. He says, well. Calm down. Hmm. So he goes, I kind of want to slap him with my rat again. Yeah, oh, that would have been cool. He says, you know what he smells like? Sewer? <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, so you, you can roll a search as a scent, or a survival as a scent, kind of like tracking. You can roll a survival as a scent and see actually if you can pick up like some kind of waft, some distinct waft of him, if you so wish. <laughs> but yes, yes, sewer is a. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I walked into that one. Well. Try and pick up his, his, you know, signature, if you will, and we'll go back and wait on you, Quill, and when he gets out, we'll, we'll see if we can't track this puppy. So, <clears throat> you, Quill, while you are down there, you know, you've had some time to just kind of look all the contestants over. You know, the Bang Zhong contestant, the uh, ban uh, the the mercenary group, the basically the panda. He's <clears throat> very very large, like heavy set, kind of muscular dude, and he's sitting there just punching away at a dummy. As if he's, well, because he's practicing his hand-to-hand -hand combat and everything. And you're stare as you watch him, he just kind of looks over his shoulder at you and he goes, What are you looking at, foreigner? As he hits the dummy. Use a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Did you quill step away? Yeah, you quill was gonna. Yeah, not say he's gonna say that, but not say that in so many words. He was all of a bitch. 
<laughs> he just looks at you for a minute and cracks his neck and goes, <clears throat> That's the case, huh? He says, Well then, I guess if you and I get pitted up against one another in the Jing Zoo, we'll just see. He goes, I don't know what this word you use actually means, but I take it as an insult. As you should. Says, you know, <clears throat> this is called the Honorable Jin Zoo, and the Dragoon dishonor all of us by having you in it. Such a soul. Mm, big feels, bro. There's a there's a song from my land that goes a little something like, "Call me a river." <laughs> he says <clears throat> he looks at you and he goes why don't you just come clean and tell us how much they you pay had to pay the dragoon to let you enter in under their name hmm I never thought mom um. says I didn't think they had a price yeah your mom <laughs> And he like kind of steps like he wants to hit you, but he stops himself and thinks about the the rules. He's like, <clears throat> he goes, when if I get a hold of you, I'm gonna break your back. Just so you know. Like what? Are you good? Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. He said break your back. I'm like, mm, that's sus. <laughs> yeah. Utterly <laughs> sus. <laughs> He points at you, just kind of pissed off, and he he walks away. <clears throat> the uh, the woman monk, Zay Yang, she walks up to you. She sits down next to you, and she says, "You don't have to antagonize the other contestants." You cool? Just kind of chuckles like. I had a fantastic conversation with the werewolf man, okay? <laughs> I don't know what his problem was. And she says, well, first of all, that was a Beijing, not a werewolf. She says, so, <clears throat> insulting even him at, it, at the basic level of his race is probably pretty antagonizing. No, not him. The, uh, somebody else. Somebody else. Ah, females. They can they always know what they're talking about. Any I digress. She says, first of all... Oh, I know. Nice. She says, I'm a master. I have trained since I was an infant at the Golden Lotus Monastery. You who are clearly of some form of military not familiar to me, while you spent your years swinging swords and probably spending all your hard-earned coin on whores and alcohol. That's simply accurate. She says... Damn, she's really going to call you out like that? <laughs> she says, I was honing my mind and body and spirit. I have been training, I have been training my whole life to earn a spot at becoming one of the honored chosen. What you trying most, to say is your fruit. Most of these men have. Most of us have. And you get to just waltz in here under the dragoon and just get accepted. And then you don't even want to explain yourself. Instead, you want to poke fun at O. Or not not Poe, that's not his name. <laughs> <laughs> his name's not Poe. Actually it might be Poe. His name is Kung Po. <laughs> you wanna make you you wanna poke fun at Kung Po. She says <clears throat> She says, I'm not saying you don't deserve your chance. I don't know you. And my honor says that I should not take you lightly. But do not take any of us lightly either. Because you're not the most popular person in this barracks right now. <clears throat> you cool kind of smiles and he's like, as far as him, 
I take him as seriously as I take any other person. It's like, you on the other hand? It's like, don't worry, I'm not underestimating you. She says, word of advice, don't underestimate anybody down here. We're all the best of the best. Which means that if the Dragoon chose you, you're the best of whatever it is you do. <clears throat> that doesn't mean that we have to like you. Well, what he does isn't very nice. <laughs> what I do isn't pretty. I'm the best at what I do. What I do. <laughs> does it hurt? Every time. Um, <laughs> I chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I don't have bubblegum. Go away down. Says... Good luck to you. Intuition. Pretty soon the gongs begin to chime and she says, Oh, round one is beginning. Round one. She says, Yes, we'll find out who's going to face off against who soon. She says, I hope for your sake that you're as good as you're acting like you are. One way to find out. Hmm. <clears throat> With that, you all rise up and uh, she says, well, follow me then since you don't know where you're going. I want to make no doubt about it. Don't mistake my kindness for weakness. And if all I'm doing is leading you to a major ass whooping, believe me. I want to see it. Then she kind of looks you. She kind of looks you up and down and goes. Then again, you may surprise me. Oh. You was gonna be like, yeah, don't worry about it. Don't get a team, yeah, when I'm still standing. <laughs> and with that, we're going to end tonight's session, y'all. Y'all have a good time out here. Wow. Wow. Yep, we're going to end it there. Next session, we shall begin the tournament. Excellent. Yes. Yes, I hope you all are as excited about this as I am. Because I'm excited to see what is going to happen. <laughs> It'll be interesting one way or another. Oh, it will be. It will be. Plus the, uh, plus the, uh, plot thickens as Android and company, or as the rest of the Inglorious Few, I should say, begin to uncover more about this insidious, nefarious plot to, no, but, uh, <laughs> begin to un uncover what is going on, you know? Who is out to kill Mazaru? Find out next time! Yep. Yep, yep. Well, I had a good time, y'all. And what is going on with Biggs? Only time will tell. Yeah. You that hardcore shit. <laughs> It was the red, it was the nice. He's down bad. It was angel dust. Angel red. Yeah, she gave him the wrong red. He and <laughs> Biggs is stuck in a, uh, in a pigeon coop right now. And only his mama can get him. the <laughs> Matrix. <laughs> Because I'm in this bitch. And I can't get out. <laughs> Oh. Cassie. Yeah. Don't take this as homework. But. Yeah, any no, 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 no. For real, though. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> everything, everything that Agaragus is pondering about. Mm -hmm. Ponder it. Ponder it this week. Okay. Let it uh uh let it let it guide your decisions in let this coming yeah in this coming session. 
in this upcoming session. Okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too in depth about that. Just <laughs> <laughs> just seriously ponder what it is that uh, you're pondering, and uh, yeah, whatever dis whatever determination you come up with. Um, yeah, it may it may uh, come to fruition one way or another. Who can say really? <laughs> <laughs> Who can say really? <clears throat> But yeah. Well, time for the outro, everyone. Thank you See to you later, bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you to everybody for uh, joining us on another session of Adventures in Luxus. We really appreciate you all. Bye. I appreciate you guys, them old school gamers, for uh, letting me once again be your humble DM. And uh, I know. I know every time you you have to come to one of these sessions, it's like watching a Greek tragedy, but I do appreciate it <laughs> all the same. Life is either a comedy or horror or a tragedy. Game before. And I'm pretty sure mine's a tragedy. No, but seriously, um, thank you to all the listeners out there. Yes, you. I'm talking to you sitting there. You know? You, me? Yeah, yes, you. Definitely you. Yes, you. Who, me? Yes, you. And you. And you. And, and don't you forget, too. Don't forget V1 because you keep saying his fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> v, are you talking about Matt? V, version 1? <laughs> 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 oh, but uh, I appreciate it, y'all. And yeah, we'll see you next time in Luxus. Y'all come back now. Stay golden. Say bye, y'all. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. See you later, bye.